Welcome folks. Um, I think you all know me. I'm pretty sure you all know Paul as well. Um, I'm Peter Robinson, um, the lead of Fedora IoT. Um, Paul, um, previously Fedora QE, now part of the Rel for Edge team along with me. Um, Paul is moving over to lead more <coughs> of the Fedora IoT in the community space um, because I just don't have enough time. So we just load balance it out. Um, so I will let Paul um, give himself a quick introduction and then we'll kick it off. All right. Uh, so as Peter said, Paul Whalen, I was the QE lead uh, for ARM and AR64 and Fedora for a number of years, uh, also taking over IoT. Uh, and now I've moved over to the Edge team and, and given uh, the reins to uh, this QE proper uh, to do the, the testing for Fedora ARM and AR64, uh, as well as IoT. All right. Uh, go for it, Paul. All right, so what is Fedora IoT for those that are new? Most of you have hopefully used uh, Fedora IoT, but we're focused on small edge devices. Uh, we currently support x86, AR64, and ARM v7. Sadly, ARM v7 is end of life uh, in Fedora 36. Um, so it's an RPM OS tree based minimal operating system so with no graphical user interface. Uh, if you're looking for graphics, then you probably want to use Silver Blue or Kenote. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's a container folk. Uh, we focus on using containers for your applications. You can layer your packages, of course, with uh, as with any RPM OS tree based uh, installation, but we do uh, prefer to use containers and encourage you to do so. Uh, we're also very focused on security. So that's why we put it there twice. Um, so it's very important to us. Uh, the current supported hardware. Uh, so UEFI is a requirement. Uh, we do also recommend that you have a TPM2 and a hardware watchdog. Uh, for Air64, we support a uh, variety of uh, server-ready uh, classes of devices, um, as, as well as edge server and IoT. Um, for NVIDIA, uh, we support the Jetson Xavier and Xavier NX. Of course, we have to support the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, and the Raspberry Pi 4 is, is more supported in IoT because we're not, we don't need graphics there. Uh, graphics the, is the big missing part uh, in, in Fedora, vanilla Fedora. Uh, we also support the Pine 64 and the Solid Run Hummingboard M, which is an IMX-based system. And for x86, uh, we, we support the FitLit 2, uh, the CompuLab FitLit 2. Uh, it's got a TPM2 on there, so it's a good device to have. Uh, as well as the UpSquared, and uh, basically any uh, x86 system that's going to have uh, UEFI should run IoT pretty well. Yeah, so we, we support numerous hardware platforms. These are the ones we actively test. Um, there'll be some more interesting ones coming along as part of Fedora 37. Um, but pretty much anything that's supported in Fedora um, should work as long as it's UEFI based. Um, yeah, we've always been UEFI focused. It enables us to um, deal with security better um, and it's a more modern platform. So um, anyway. All right, so what is featured in Fedora 36 for IoT? So it's, uh, as I mentioned previously, it's the last uh, supported release uh, for ARMv7. Um, ARMv7 is deprecated largely due to a lack of um, AR64 hardware that supports uh, AR32. Uh, so we, we we're running out of uh, options to uh, for the build system. We've also got Podman 4.0, um, and they've had a complete rewrite of their networking stack, uh, as well as various other improvements. Uh, new new complementary network stack, which we've included in IoT. Um, it's great for IoT um, deployments. Uh, Parsec 1.0, uh, so platform abstraction for security, uh, basically an abstraction layer for security hardware, uh, allows you to use devices like such as uh, TPM and uh, HSMs, uh, and various improvements to Greenboot. Um, so Greenboot's uh, got some more uh, health checks uh, added to it by default.
And what what is Green Boom? Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right. So Green Boot is a health check framework for systemd on RPM uh, OS tree based installation. Uh, so when you boot up your system, it runs a variety of health checks uh, to ensure the system's in functioning properly. And if not, it'll roll, roll back to the last known good configuration. Um, so users can easily add their own scripts, just a, a small bash script to, to personalize health checks. Like if you have a host that your remote device needs to reach. Uh, you can easily create a small bash script that'll do that uh, on boot. Um, and of course, if you can't reach that host, it'll roll back to the last uh, configuration that it could. So work is ongoing to enhance reboot for Fedora 37. We're, we're trying to make things easier um, so we don't ask users to write a bash script. Um, so looking forward to, our, to that. Yeah, so um, what, one of the, since um, like Fedora IoT started as an R&D project back in 2016, um, we had a bit of a long road through objective and spins and eventually to addition. Um, when the work that myself and others had done as part of that uh, was approved to go to product, um, we that was early 2020 and with various different bits and pieces like COVID and um, lack of travel and all sorts of other things. Um, we ended up having to focus on Roll for Edge first and foremost. Um, Fedora IoT as a result of that, some people may have noticed has sort of slowed down um, its development somewhat. Um, with Fedora 37, that's now changing. Um, worked closely with Matthew, um, IFA and the CPE team to get Image Builder as a service into place. Um, that should be going um, live. Now we're out of freeze for Fedora 36 um, this coming week. Um, so we can start to move um, a lot of the um, pieces that we will have been working on in Roll for Edge um, back upstream into Fedora 37 to enable the development to happen there. So the plan is for the Roll for Edge team um, to make Fedora um, be the upstream again, like the full upstream where all the innovation happens, things will happen first in Fedora. Um, so we've got a bunch of major improvements and changes from Roll for Edge that will be back upstreaming for Fedora 37. Um, we have three changes approved so far. I need to read or finish writing up the rest of the changes with the team um, so that we can submit them. Um, so they'll be coming along in the next few weeks. Um, so 37 is going to be pretty major shift for Fedora IoT, a bunch of fun and interesting innovations. Um, we've been working closely on things like the FIDO device onboarding standard with the upstream um, organization, um, working as we have in the past with ARM on things like System Ready, Project Cassini and Parsec, as Paul mentioned previously. Um, and with internal teams like the image builder team. Um, so we've got numerous enhancements there that will be initially going into Fedora IoT, but they'll be definitely relevant also for things like um, the mobility project um, with Fedora on various different open phones um, and stuff like that. So it's something that myself and the team are really excited about because it's something that we've felt has been lacking for some time, but like everything, um, priorities and resources available and availability of team members to work on things has been a bit of a struggle. Um, so so that, that I think is very exciting for both the team and for Fedora IoT as a whole. Um, so look forward to um, seeing some more changes come out there and we're all looking forward to working on them over the summer as um, we get things back upstream. Um, so some of the technologies that are coming along, um, there's IMA, um, the um, proposal which I think we introduced first in Fedora 33 for signing of RPMs um, has been approved for Fedora 37 and um, that should be turned on hopefully this coming week again with the um, infrastructure unfreezing. Um, it gives us the ability to do runtime verification on files based on what the build system was pr produced. So 
um, the ability to be able to, you know, control a system to allow it to do what the owner wants it to do, as opposed to something that an attacker or someone else may want it to do, um, is very important um, for IoT devices. Um, you know, IoT and Edge is quite different from a lot of use cases where, you know, devices in a data center have four walls and an access control list to um, which provide large amounts of the ability to secure a device. When you go and put a device out in the field on a light pole in, in you know, other different use cases in robotics, various other bits and pieces, um, you may not have that sort of direct physical access control. And so it's one of the many layers of security. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have referred to security like an onion needs multiple layers. Um, so it's purely there so that, um, you know, the owners of the system can verify at a runtime that they're running the binaries that Fedora shipped from the build system. And, you know, this could be an isolated system that is fairly bolted down that has limited network connectivity. Um, and, you know, but it can still verify, you know, that the binary is exactly what Fedora produced, you know, years earlier, potentially at runtime. Um, so I feel it's going to be a fairly important um, and a bunch of other people across the Linux industry feel it's a fairly important um, means of, you know, verifying IoT platforms. Um, so the base functionality is accepted in Fedora 37. Um, there's numerous enhancements coming in um, that will be you know, available in releases going forward. Um, there's still a lot of work to do. IMA has been around for some time in the Linux kernel, but it's been never really used and deployed as part of a general purpose Linux distro. So there's been a lot of work done there. It's, there's been probably best part of two years of work um, from my team and wider teams across the ecosystem from IBM, Intel um, and others um, to get things fixed and improved and enhanced to make it um, best deployable for general purpose distros. Um, and, you know, Fedora and RHEL 9 are the first that will be doing that for a general purpose distro. But, you know, there's certainly lots of interest in there um, across the industry as one of the many components used to secure a device. Um, I mentioned FIDO device onboarding. It's an open spec that came out of Intel. Um, it was called secure device onboarding there. Um, the spec was improved and enhanced as part of that. Um, it became part of the FIDO organization which some people may know for um, WebAuthN and, and various like authentication tokens and things like that. So part of the same organization, um, but running under the IoT working group as part of that. Um, Red Hat is a member of the FIDO IoT working group and we're actively working to evolve the standard. Um, my team did a clean implementation in Rust from the upstream standard. Um, it's had interrupt testing with the other open standard. Uh, we felt Rust was the better way to go with um, this platform. The other open spec is written in a combination of C and Java. Um, we felt um, for IoT and Edge devices that Rust was probably um, the better language to do that in. So we did a clean implementation from the ground up. Um, so the first version of that that we're actively deploying will be um, in Fedora for Fedora 37. Um, that's kind of exciting. I think, um, you know, Fedora and RHEL 9 will be the first um, Linux distros, I think, generally to support this new standard. Um, it came out um, as a 1.0 um, May last year. 1.1, I think, is out now, and the spec that we implement is based on 1.1. And so I think that's exciting um, and certainly one of the firsts um, and I think you know the industry as a whole is moving towards this it needs hardware manufacturers and various other um, involvement because of things like root of trusts and chain of trust when a company manufactures a device 
um, it would generate a device credential. And then as it goes to um, a wholesaler and then onto a reseller and then to the final owner, that chain of trust gets extended so that when you onboard a device, you can verify who the owner is um, and who that device belongs to. Um, and so you can plug it in, it brings itself up on the network. Um, and because of that chain of trust, there's a rendezvous server that will redirect the device to who the um, management platform belongs to. Um, and you can basically onboard a device with zero touch. Um, so it's very cool technology um, and really looking forward to be able to sort of get this into Fedora and demo it. Um, so yeah. Um, as Paul mentioned, um, we're moving a bunch of the um, component, like the artifact generation over to OS build. Um, we'll be implementing um, some new artifacts for Fedora 37 as well. Um, one of the advantages of this is the old way we do things is, you know, in Koji using Punji, various other bits and pieces. Um, it's not easy as it stands at the moment to recreate and modify Fedora IAT for your own use cases and your own deployment methods and things like that. Um, bringing OS build in here allows users to be able to, you know, install OS build on their own build system and take the Fedora sort of input configurations and be able to generate and modify Fedora IAT to suit their own things much easier. Um, so while we'll have the sort of vanilla um, generic Fedora IAT official images, it'll make it much, much easier um, for users to do their own customized platforms if they're happy to deal with, um, you know, the, um, you know, output and generating updates themselves and various other bits and pieces. Um, so this is the first move um, to bring, you know, artifacts built on OS build into Fedora. Um, so Fedora IoT is leading that initiative. I'm hoping that there'll be many more artifacts over time generated. Um, the nice thing about OS build or image builder um, is that there is a team, like a full team at Red Hat that is actively maintaining and improving this constantly. Um, that team is very excited that Fedora IoT is moving to this. Um, in Fedora infrastructure for the official builds. Um, looking forward to moving over other artifacts for it um, in time as, you know, the bits and pieces fall into place. But yeah, it, it's nice to have like a fully maintained sort of um, platform for producing these sort of artifacts. Um, simplified provisioning will be a new feature. Haven't done this feature change yet, um, but this is, Anaconda, when you like the traditional Fedora installer, um, will install a system like every single time. And it should be the same, but like it's a little bit like um, calligraphy of old. Like in the old days, if you wanted a book, you would hire a calligrapher or a group of calligraphers to write books, and they would mostly be the same. But you know, it's writing down the bits every single time and you may get some slight nuances basically if the hardware is slightly different or it detects hardware slightly differently or there's slightly different versions of firmware, um, you may get, you know, things that are slightly different. Simplified provisioning, um, we generate an image with OS build where we ex explicitly specify what we want. Um, you can deploy it with network, USB, disk, factory provisioning. Um, and so that image is identical. Um, so it's more like feeding a piece of paper into a photocopier and getting a thousand identical deployments or a million or however many. Um, it has some nifty new features that we've worked on um, recently. So we can do things like pre-encrypted um, or set up the image fully for pre-encryption. And then when you like provision it onto a system such as you know, an edge gateway or something like that. Um, it generates a new encryption key and rolls that into the TPM um, and then sets off re-encryption running. So the disk is completely re-encrypted. Um, and that's all with a single disk image. So um, 
there's some fairly cool and fun things there. I feel those sort of technologies will be very useful for things like the mobility project where we can generate an image if people want their phone encrypted, you know, they encrypt it um, and, so, like, and set the re-encryption running. And again, so we can produce like generic images that are sort of null encrypted um, and the, um, the encryption tech basically will re-encrypt it on the phone for like a device specific encryption. Um, so things like that are very cool um, and looking forward to seeing them used in other areas of Fedora as well. Um, how are we doing all this? Um, this year, the Rel for Edge team has a bunch of new team members. Um, so I think we're sitting around seven now. Um, hopefully, a couple more coming on later on in the year. Um, you know, with Fedora IoT becoming a full upstream to Rel for Edge again, um, that allows us to um, drive the innovation there. We're mentoring an outreachy intern for the summer to improve. Um, and rewrite Zaziri, um, which will be based on top of the FDO stack. So that'll be like new provisioning tech um, within Fedora. I'm not sure that that will necessarily be ready for Fedora 37. Um, it might be, um, but you know, looking forward to um, getting involved, the team's looking forward to getting involved in um, the outreachy program. And so I think, you know, that'll be fun. Um, and certainly help us um, improve more things in Fedora. Um, and of course, you know, contributing the usual way, IRC, matrix, meetings, mailing lists, documentation, etc. So I think that's it. Don't even know Perfect. how we did on time there. <laughs> very, very good there. I was getting a little worried, but that worked out. We've got time for a few questions here. Um, so I think the first one is, uh, will these slides be available online somewhere? I think that's probably yes. the... Yes. Okay, well, and we'll figure out how to get that information to people. Um, the next one uh, I'll is I'll probably about... just put them on my blog as a quick post. All right, that's awesome. Um, will OS build run in mock and Koji, or does it go around that, like the current image build? Um, so in Fedora infrastructure, we are using the uh, Red Hat image builder as a service. Um, so it runs through Koji um, and then calls out to the API um, to run the builds for us. Um, it currently supports um, x86 and ARM64 um, and Power and Z will be coming later on in the summer, I believe. Um, and then you can run it at home on Fedora or CentOS Stream or RHEL um, just on native architectures. I think being able to run it yourself with this very same configuration easily without having to set up the whole thing is pretty powerful. Yeah, um, that, that that's one of the big advantages why I want to move to it because we can document how people can make their own. Um, so next one is, given that uh, some of this stuff is implemented in Rust, will there be more official and slash Red Hat support and help with Rust packaging in Fedora, I'm editorializing with the slash Red Hat there, but I think that's the implication. Um, um, this is, that this is, from is someone who I know does remit? a lot of someone who does a lot of the Rust work, who would uh, very much like some more help. I think. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know the answer to that question. Is the um, I'll put out another thing. Anybody interested in IoT and Rust and listening to this, we could use some more help with the Rust ecosystem in Fedora. So um, yeah, let's get, get in touch with Decathorpe about that, I guess. Um, and then I guess the, the last one here that got, well, I'm going to skip that one about Image Builder because it's off topic. Let's go straight to which IoT device has the best hardware support out of the box right now, and what would you recommend to beginners? Oh, that's um, that's an interesting one because it all depends on what you want to do with it. Um, the Raspberry Pi 4 um, for the headless support that we do is pretty good. Um, part of the problem with that at the moment is it is very unobtainable. Um, I love the word unobtainium. Um, and like I managed to get a compute module for um, I've only been on the waiting list for one of these um, from suppliers since October last year. 
um, and the supplier that I'd signed up for, numerous suppliers I'd signed up for, gave me a notification in the email. I bought one instantaneously, and 15 minutes later, they were sold out. Um, you know, general purpose, like semi modern Intel platform. Um, the UpSquared runs things pretty well. Um, I have one of those on my desk, but it's not sort of reachable. Um, and there should be some more interesting hardware coming along over the summer. Um, we're doing some interesting stuff with NVIDIA. Um, there's nothing. So we support the basics there. Um, I'm hoping we'll see more from them um, in coming months around their AIML stack for Jetson. But, um, you know, third party vendors are sometimes fun to deal with. Um, yeah, so uh, it depends a lot on your use case. Um, there's a couple of interesting networking devices um, that I've seen um, sort of announced recently. Um, so looking at some interesting bits and pieces there. Um, yeah, it, it, there are so many different IoT and Edge use cases. There's like it very much depends on what you you want to do with it. So, not unfortunately, not a really simple answer yet, but hopefully no. we'll get there eventually. Um, so, I think we're at time here. Thank you very much, Paul and Peter.